See, I'm I'm coming up to sixty. I think you're two or three years old. Sixty six. Sixty six. Pensioner now. Got me bus pass. Did you get a bus pass? Yeah. Don't tell me that, mate. <laughs> Don't tell me that. And I get me pension. <laughs> my state pension. It's great. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I keep getting these notifi- tell me this. notifications on my phone, you know. Yeah. Just add another 884 quid. I'm like, wow, Is great. that what it is, monthly? Free money? Ah, but have you paid all your... Oh, oh yeah, of Have you I paid have. up your national insurance contribution? Since day one. All the way up since day oh, one. Oh, yeah, of course. Even from working at bins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In 40 years since the last time I... I kind of got this close between a couple of microphones and then yeah. Ocean Road. I remember it well. You don't. I know. <laughs> no, didn't they? It wasn't a very <laughs> eventful interview. But I was terrified in that interview because you and and, um, and McCall came in yeah. and Ocean Rain had, had just come out. I think it came out in the May, I think, Ocean Rain, didn't it? Yeah. Of 84. I remember we were dead chuffed because there was a HMV on uh, Church Street, I think it was, and they had the big display in the window. We yeah. were like, wow, you yeah. know, took photos of it and that. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And at the time you came, it was at Radio City. This you came in, right? And um, and I, and I was asking the questions. I was I was only a young kid, you know, a bit kind of green. But the Bunnymen, for some reason in my head, the Bunnymen had this reputation of kind of this armor-like, cool, and you know, don't upset them because they'll just kill you. Yeah. And this was in my mind, and well, I'm thinking. Well, that's the way we were. So I had it in my mind, and I wasted the interview really because I, I panicked a bit and yeah. went a bit smash it's like what's your favourite biscuit and all of that yeah. stuff. You know, forty years on, um, I didn't think I would be sat here talking about you yeah. and everything that you've you've achieved. Yeah, well, it's been a, a m- an amazing mm. journey, really. You know, considering I was just like a, a short order cook from uh, Bins or Henderson's as it was. Mm. You know, it's. Uh, it's you know you look back and you think bloody hell how the hell did I do that like mm. you know Japan and Australia and all these places the traveling is one of the best things definitely one of the best things about being in a band was that being able to travel because there's no way I'd have got anywhere you know mm. and I probably not even bothered getting a passport mm. it'd have been real for me mm. and uh, you know a bit of Lake District <laughs> yeah you, you talk in the first book you know Bunny Man and in the second one Echoes which is coming out in paperback isn't it on the eleventh, yeah, the 11th. like next week, yeah. So that that's that's coming up. You you talk a lot about this. How, how how difficult or easy was it to to sit down and go right for the next however many days or months? I am gonna put my life story down. I mean, why why did you feel as though you needed to to do this? Um, I felt that really it was getting told by other people incorrectly, and. Um, I like to put the record straight a bit, you know, and it was also, I got asked to do, um, I got asked to do liner notes for some reissues that came out on this label. They were doing like these really nice kind of mm. crocodile seven up here, yeah. porcupine and ocean rain reissues. And they asked, they asked me to do it, you know, so I thought I'll give it a go. And I realized that I could actually kind of string a few words together and do it, you know, mm. um, so that gave me like a bit of a spurt to do it, you know. And then I met this girl called Jennifer uh, Otter uh, Bickerdyke, and she uh, written written a book called Why Vinyl Matters, mm. and um, she introduced me to an agent, you know. And it sort of went on from there, and I got like uh, a deal with you know Constable Books, you know, and, and uh, part of Hachette, yeah. and. Just gone from there, really, and they're dead nice people, you know. Yeah. But putting it all down and, and revisiting those times because it wasn't easy. It, wasn't it was e- like it wasn't easy childhood for, for you. This was no, it? but at the time you don't notice. No, you don't because it's just normal. Mm. You know, it's normal for you, you know, parents to be arguing twenty four hours a day, mm. and fighting and all that. And you just, just think everyone's mum and dad's yeah, like that. Yeah, it was like I remember seeing one of my mates. Well, uh, dad come home from work at the BICC and gave his mum a kiss, and it was like. I couldn't deal with it. It was like, that was weird. I'd never seen anything like that. I'd never seen any affection or anything like that. Mm. So it was kind of a, that was a strange one, you know? Mm. Um, but it was just, to us, it was just me and my brother and my sister. Like, my brother and my sister, they got away as soon as they could. As soon as they were kind of 18, they bailed out. Um, and everything calmed down after my mum and dad split up. So when she, you know, left... When I was 13, everything kind of calmed down and it became mm. all right. 
Came yeah. back into your life though. Did you were eighteen or something when she came back into your mm, life? Twenty one. Twenty one. I never saw her from thirteen till I was twenty one. Thirteen to twenty one. And was it your mate who went your mum wants you, she's round the corner. She was over the road, yeah, That's my right. mate's house. Um and it was my twenty first birthday. And it was just all a bit weird. It was like this woman that I didn't know who it was. It wasn't like, Oh mummy you know, it was just like awkward. Yeah. You know, and it's kind of all them formative years were not were void, you know, null. So mm. it was kind of a it was a strange one, you know. It wasn't exactly, you know, uh, hearts and flowers. Yeah, you know. And but it was a gold gold stuff. bracelet, wasn't it? She yeah, it's like, you, and like it, a, it's a, a gate, re- gate bracelet. Yeah, yeah, it represented everything I wasn't. So you know, there was that as well, which was like kind of, uh, you know, she didn't know who I was, and I didn't know who she was mm. really. Mm. Uh, but we did keep, keep in touch a bit, but not much really. No, no it just wasn't there. When I had kids, you know, yeah. take them up there and that, but couldn't really wait to get out of there, really. Yeah. <laughs> Listening, because I didn't read the books, I, I listened, and you narrated them, yeah. you know, the audio books as, yeah. as well. Um, which it, it was, I'm not just saying it because you know, it was absorbing and I had to be in work, so I, mm. I was late for work a couple of times. I was sat in the car <laughs> listening to you it. You can't really. be late for Radio Bersey side. You, know, you can't be late for the BBC, <laughs> mate. No, right. you can't. And um, it, was, it was just stories that I could relate to. Um, you're a melling lad, aren't you? you yeah. know, I think you describe yourself as a bit of a woolly back in it. You well, know? And he yeah, had to Melling's through... eight miles from Liverpool, yeah, but it's seen as like this, like. Yeah. Yeah. glorious countryside but it is sort of where the countryside begins and yeah. Liverpool ends like after Aintree it kind of you've got this sort of green belt bit and yeah. then it starts being fields and then you get into Orton and all that stuff yeah, yeah. It's, it's a bit weird isn't it that it can be just like you know this imaginary border where it says woolly back yeah. scouser yeah but you it know. depends how close you are to, exactly. to the border doesn't it exactly um, I'm sure there were some girls who used to go to Ar- Eric's and they used to go to our well Tara well. Yeah, Tara well. Not will. Tara well. Oh well. It wasn't they weren't saying my name, it's just they'd say it to every, every you know, it was Tara, it was Tara well. Weird. Very strange. And um, I've said that to a few, you know, yeah. scousers and they go, What yeah, are you on about? Heard of that. Well it, the language changes though over the years that yeah. we went through the la phase. Now we're yeah. in the lad phase. Well you know, do the whack. Well I I never heard anyone that. say whack I've unless they were taking the Mickey. I've you know? never heard anybody <laughs> say whack ever, <laughs> ever, ever. It's all right, whack. The, the, I mean, you mentioned Eric's there as well, which, which had a massive impact on you. The part, whole punk thing just opened the doors, just kicked the doors down for everybody that was like slightly interested in music and had mm. pretensions of being in a band. And it did, it really did open the doors because all of a sudden if you knew two chords or even one chord, you'd be all right, you know, and you mm. could just do it. And it, it didn't really... And you were just doing it for yourself. It wasn't like you were doing it to get anywhere or fame or money or any of that crap. Mm. It was just putting your your feet down and being creative mm. and like saying, I'm a creative person. Yeah. I think that's what it was really with, with a lot of the bands, you know, a lot of the, the kids that used to go to Eric's. Yeah. It was like, I could be creative, you know. I'm, it's It was just... It's like you're an elastic band and you've been stretched and stretched and all of a sudden all this creativity was flooding out just because you had like an outlet for it yeah. and the outlet was punk rock. Mm. And you talk about the acceptance, you know, as being one of the, the Eric's yeah, crowd yeah. then, if you like, you know, just a, just a nice little nod. you know. Yeah, you know, and kind of, um, yeah, we started, we, we ended up like we'd get in for free, you know, because Roger had put us on a couple of times, you know, or supported. This is Rog, Roger Eagle, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah, that's right. And, um, and Doreen used to just sneak us in anyway, even if, mm. you know, even before that. It was, uh, you were like in the gang, you know, you were safe and you were one of the, one of the gang kind of thing. And that was, that felt great. You know? So when the, the early, the early gigs, I don't think it was the first, I think it was maybe the second or the third gig that, that you did mm. at the Everyman, complete unmitigated disaster. disaster. Yeah, yeah. Well, we didn't know how a band works, you know. We we didn't know any of the logistical stuff or, you know, roadies and how to tune a guitar or nothing like that. We always just get Julian Cope to tune our guitars, you know, because he, he could do it. Yeah. <laughs> I was terrible. I'm still terrible now. No, like, without tuning, I don't, I don't you know, the little so, tuners, without them, I'd be, hmm. be rubbish, you know. Hmm. Um, as soon as they got invented, we were straight down to Hesse's. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Hesse's, yeah. <laughs> 
So you're on the stage, the everyman. You think everything's working and nothing's coming out. And well, yeah, you know, we didn't know how it worked. That Sandman wasn't even there. He was still in the Philharmonic having a bevy. So so we go on the stage. But like, it doesn't sound quite it's like a sound at the sound check, like, yeah. you know. And then there was nothing coming out the PA because it wasn't turned on. And nobody, even the crowd didn't really notice. Like, there was a few people there because there was, by then, there was a little bit of a word of mouth thing mm -hmm. kicking off, you know. Uh, and and also with the Eric's crowd, they they support, you know what, you know like the Spitfire Boys were had a lot of support and Frank um, Big in Japan, mm -hmm. you know, and Orchestral Maneuvers and all them. They all had like their own little gangs that would support them. So we had a few people there, and I broke a string. I, like eventually, the Sandman did turn up. And it all came on. It was like, oh, it all comes to life. Yeah. And then I broke a string, and we didn't have any spare strings or nothing. And my guitar just went out of tune, and it was just like, oh, that was the end of that. Mentally, <laughs> mentally scarred. Mentally scarred. It was, that was it. Yeah, yeah. It was a great gig. And that was at the, the Everyman, which it was the, B, the bistro, wasn't it? It was downstairs. Yeah, you yeah, used to go downstairs, place. wasn't it? I yeah, it. yeah. Because you know. these kind of little, little spaces and places, because it's easy to think that... At the time, Liverpool had all of these great venues and the nighttime economy, as they like to call it. There was yeah. nothing. There was virtually there nothing. Was not a lot, there was no. not there a was lot around. Kirkland's, mm. Macmillan's, um, Concert Street, was it? Yeah, uh, the Mardi. I used to yeah. have things on, didn't I? I saw yeah. Jonathan Richmond there. Uh, there was, yeah, there was a few things. Do you remember that place called the Swinging Apple? I don't know. There was, a, there was another punk club at the same time. Yeah, and it was called the Swinging Apple. But it was like to us, like Eric's was the proper punk place, you know, Swing and Apple. There, just, there is people out there that support the Swing and Apple and think that was the really, that yeah, was the yeah. proper punk place. Yeah. And Eric's was like, yeah. you know, a bit too, you know, corporate or something. I don't know. Eric's corporate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was just this horrible. Yeah. I don't know. I went there once and thought, this is crap in here. Yeah. yeah. And that was it. Um, what was it like the first time that. You heard yourselves on the radio, and who played it? Was it John Peel? Yeah, it was John Peel. Um, I'm pretty sure it was John Peel. Because that was a massive thing, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, to be played oh, yeah. on the radio was yeah. like, wow. Yeah, it was Peely, and he uh, it was the single "Pictures on My Wall," and he played that, and he went, "That's the mighty Echo and the Bunnymen," and we um, immediately got a stamp made, like a rubber stamp with the mighty Echo and the Bunnymen on. Bill Drummond got it made straight mm. away. And we used to stamp everything, you know, because we a lot of it then was mail order to the office in Chicago buildings. Mm -hmm. So on my dinner hour, I'd go over there and help put all the records and I'd write little notes and things on stuff, you know. Say something was going to Dev and I'd go, you know, or, you know, you, you can bring the, the clotted cream or whatever, you know, <laughs> something, something stupid Very like rock that. and roll. Yeah, 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 something <laughs> stupid like that. And uh, it was good, though. It felt like... We were like a family. It was mm. like a family-run business almost. You Can know? you remember where you were when it was played? Because there was no like, you house. know, let's listen back or we'll we'll listen again or you know. Do well, a we catch used to up. tape. John Peel used to get taped every every time he was on, you know, like yeah. on cassettes, and then we play him in the van and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, it was like I was in I was in my um, back room at my dad's house, Fifteen mm. Station Road, and. Um, I think we might have been given the heads up somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, Peel is going to play your single, and it was the power of Peel then, wasn't it? You know that yeah. was that then, was the thing. And then we sort of there. well, he, he played it a few times, you know, over the next few weeks or whatever. And then we got a session, and we did did a session with the drum machine and that, you know. Mm. Everything was working this time. Well, yeah, because uh, <laughs> <laughs> we sort of yeah, everything was working. No broken string. No, I think by then we had a lad called Alan Jones that used to come with us and he knew how to tune up. <laughs> mm. Mm. When when you were putting everything down, you said to me before that you wanted to get it all down and get it out there. As a, that's the story, that's the accurate story because if we don't get the accurate story, you get people saying, well, yeah, well it was this, it was that, it, it, was, it was that. But when it's coming from, you know, the horse's mouth, that's, well, that's different. Isn't it? Yeah, but... I could understand if people see it in a different way or they're, they're mm. coming in it at a different angle. Yeah. So their story is probably slightly different to my story, but they're all 
yeah. the real story, really, but just seen from different angles. Yeah, you know. Do you, do you like doing stuff like this? Do you like doing the interviews? I've got and... used to it, and I don't I, like. I, I was always like the sort of quiet, moody one at the back that yeah. wouldn't say anything in an interview, or like would be like, "This is crap." This, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Was negative. that part of a persona, was it? Or, or was did you re- was, really feel I think it was way? instilled in me from your dad. Do you think so? Yeah, because yeah. he was a miserable, you know, sod. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so everything was bad all the time, yeah. you know, and he was like sort of, not scared, but kind of against everything. Like he hated the police and he hated mm. the government and he Politics. hated the royal family. And, so it was a real know, kind of glass half empty thing. Yeah, probably. But if that if that's bleach. going on, yeah, full of bleach. <laughs> <laughs> so if that's going on all the time, and that's as you say, the only thing you know, yeah. that becomes lead behaviour. I suppose you just think that's the way everybody is. I suppose. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it was yeah. like a, we had a an inbuilt sort of defence, being like kind of unapproachable and kind of was our defence. Mm. Uh, so you know that's that's why you were scared when you tried to interview us in 1984 mm. because we'd we'd built this we'll get you know we'll send the ed in first well that, you know, that was exactly is the it. best form of defense Ex- exactly and that. that's that was a lot of what what was going on with not just me but with mac as well you yeah. know yeah and um <laughs> you know you expect to be made to look an idiot so we'll get the first blows in and make them look idiots first. Yeah, yeah. So you've gotten used to doing the media and stuff. How are you with, and I think you mentioned this in in Echoes, which is the, the, the second book, you've done a gig, you've just come off stage, it's all gone really, really well, and you're thinking, you know, I just, I just want to relax here, but somebody wants a selfie, somebody wants a, an autograph. Well, they didn't so, have selfies in them days, yeah, you know, but... but yeah, they, no, I, people, people want to chat, people yeah. want to go, they want to, you know, because yeah. they, like, they like you, you know, yeah. that's that's the thing, but... Well, some of them were divvies, and you'd, you know, be horrible to them, but a lot of them were all right, you know. <laughs> a lot of them we still know now. Do you? You know, there's, there's fans that still come and see us now who we've yeah. known for... Donkey's years, you know. I was looking at some of the footage of um, Crystal Day. Was that yeah. what, what year was that? Crystal Day. It was on yeah, the ferry was, and everything. Yeah, that was eighty-four or five. I eighty-four think. or five. That was like massive in the city. I think, wasn't it for for the fans? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was another one of them things. We did. We didn't like to do things that other bands were doing. Mm. You know, just your normal gigs. Like we used to put the drums at the side of the stage. You know, so we were all in a line across the front. It was kind of like. You know, uh, equality. Yeah. You know, mm. some are more equal than others, though. Exactly. Yeah, you're right. How how far are you through the the next the next book? Because as we said, the paperback of the second book's out. Um, yeah. and have you started There's that? There's no pressure on me to do it. You know. Oh, there I is because like... I want to know. <laughs> there is. Well, There's lots of pressure. I want to know. <laughs> no pressure from the company anyway. Yeah. You know, from the uh, the publishers. You're a, you're a Sunday Times bestseller. Twice. twice. Sorry, I'll, I'll do that again. I'll put an edit in. You're a Sunday Times bestseller. Twice. twice. <laughs> well, that, that's that's like because we build it up so much and that, you know, with yeah. like the bunny men, loyalists, you mm. know, that they're all waiting for it to come out and, then soon, and they pre-order it. So it's kind of... I think you're being a bit modest there, you know. I think, I think yeah. No, I, like, my, I like it when somebody particularly didn't like the bunny men or wasn't that bothered has read it and then found it an entertaining read that's where i really like yeah you know when someone says that you know i wasn't really into the band but i loved your book you know mm. Mm. i like that um what did the family think of it because i know you're, you're a dad aren't you and i know uh yeah well you know i don't think they've read it they've not <sighs> read it like no do you tell them everything i think um They've read bits, but I don't think they've read it all. Yeah, like uh, it's the two girls you've, you've I've got. I've got two girls. Got two yeah. girls. Yeah. yeah, my wife died like ten years ago, I so know. Yeah. it's kind of uh, a yeah. yeah. What but was the, it like? You know, kind getting of... on now, but like in the late twenties, early thirties. So when when they see your body of work and what you've done, and whether you want to hear this or not, and you were saying oh, I still can't tune my guitar and blah blah blah, you know, there's. There's, I can do it to a degree. Yeah, but you you are an influ- you are you have been and still are an influence on many many musicians even though you may think you're not. I mean you you are. That's yeah. the that's the reality of it. When when you hear that or when your girls say my dad influenced this or yeah. the Kurt Cobain uh, <laughs> connection and all, all of that. Yeah. You know, you you must think do you think is that is that me? It is a bit weird. I must admit it is a bit weird, but they don't 
they just see me as dad. They're not like, yeah. you know, they like it when something goes well and they hear about it, you know. Yeah. Uh, do you still get the same kind of buzz with, oh, with, with the gigs now? It, it's very simple. It's all about the crowd. If the crowd are into it, you're into it. Mm -hmm. And it's like you feed off the crowd's enthusiasm. And there's, it's corny, but it, that's what works. And it, it just does, you know. And it'll if they're really into it, it spares you on to try different mm. things and hit the guitar just a little bit harder or whatever, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's all about the crowd for me. If the crowd are into it, I'm into it, and that's it. Mm. And like, it's the people go, "Oh, you're getting on a bit now. Don't you think it's a bit stupid being in a band?" It's like, well, wait a minute. I go all around the world. I've got people that love us. I'm playing songs that I've created and helped create, and you know, we're getting paid for it. So it's like, uh, which bit of it aren't you, aren't you really getting there, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's just the best feeling playing live. It's just the best feeling that there is. Yeah. When it's going right, you know, it can be, it can plunge you into the depths of hell very easily if something goes wrong. It doesn't go wrong very often, though, does it, surely? Uh, now and then. After all not, these not years. Not often, no. Yeah, but sometimes... No. We're you've... getting quite good at it now after 40 <laughs> odd years. You must try harder. <laughs> um, yeah, but sometimes, quite often, if something goes wrong you might notice but sometimes the crowd don't well notice. that's it yeah they, that's it. you, you, know, you oh, mess up and you play the wrong notes yeah, but they or something. Don't know that. it's gone it's gone within a split second yeah exactly but you've got all these people with the bloody mobile phones recording and haven't you so it's on it's on the internet forever <laughs> yeah you know you yeah. fluffing some bit yeah. or coming in the like you know sometimes mac will change the, the song uh order like oh we're doing the uh, edgerill roll next or something mm. and like Everyone can hear him because they've got all, all in ear, you know, um, headphones, mm. and I haven't. I've got a monitor, so I, I don't always catch what he says. So I'll be ready to do one song, and then they'll all like, you know, start another one, and something like that can yeah. happen quite easily. Yeah, but sometimes that I have to keep my eye on him. Yeah, but sometimes that that if it all went, you know, this is the run, it, it becomes a bit too clinical, then, yeah, I think, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, you know. Yeah, well, we have like sections in the songs where we can drift off yeah. into like big trippy sections, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know we can kind of do anything, and it's that's you know that's what's another good thing about playing live is it's never the same twice. Yeah. Do you have a sound? Do you have the I the think, Will Sergeant I sound? Think there is, but do, I don't do, really do know how. Yeah. You know, um, it's kind of a lot of echo and reverb and stuff like that. You know, I like to I like effects. How many guitars do you have now? You must oh, you, God. you collect them, don't you? I don't collect them. I just sort of acquire them somehow. Uh, that sounds like you've nicked them. Well, <laughs> I've <yeah>. acquired them. <laughs> <laughs> People have acquired my guitars. I'll tell you that. Have you lost yeah, guitars yeah, over a couple the years? Guitars been nicked. Have you? Where from? Uh, well, I left one at him in McCulloch's house, and I never saw that again. Right. Uh, but that was when during that breakup period, yeah, so yeah. it was kind of yeah. like oh, I'm yeah, going yeah. back for that. Yeah. Um, and that was a nice one. It was a 1960s pre-CBS Fender mm. Jag, salmon pink, salmon original pink. colour. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's the one that's on the inside of Crocodiles, yeah. playing on the inside of Crocodiles on the inside cover photo. That went missing. And another one um, I lent to somebody and then they claimed that it didn't. Well, I'm not going to mention who it was. No, it's probably not a good idea, really. But I've it? actually seen them play it. Really? <laughs> and that's my guitar. Yeah. I yeah, felt the need to jump up on stage. You know, yeah. Just load a mobile phone. But the you thing is, you be doing like, that. you know, if he'd have said, can I have that guitar? Yeah. Because it was only like, mm. it was one that I was given anyway. Yeah. I'd yeah. probably say, yeah, you can have it. Yeah. What, what's but the I one? I don't like. What, what's the one that you would. Uh, you, you would go to to the ends of the earth to save what what's what's the guitar what's the one that you just think this is this is this is my best mate uh well they've all got they're all useful for different things like the vox teardrop guitar mm. is the one that like everyone sort of knows about because it's on killing moon and the solo on killing moon and yeah. all that um but I've got a copy of that guitar now, and it sounds pretty much the same, mm. and it stays in tune. Like that one, it's terrible. If you hit it hard, it's just out of tune. It's not one that I play all the time. If, you know, I use this copy now because it's mm. it, it never lets me down. Yeah, That other one has let me down loads of times. 
What do so, you think about cover versions of songs that you've you've done? Is it Nouvelle Vague? I think they did. Uh, yeah. Was it Killer Moon they did? They've done a few. They've done Zimbo f- as well. That's and, uh, right. Yeah. What, what What do you think? I think I like them. They're yeah. good. You know, I liked them before they did that. You know, I liked the, you know, manner of speaking and melt with you and all of that stuff. Yeah. You yeah. know, they do um, all that eighty stuff, but it's kind of an interesting way they do it. You know. They do a Dead Kennedys one as well, which I can't mention. Yeah, too oh, yeah. drunk to... Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Warner Kate. Exactly. Yeah, you're right. So did when when you sat down and, you know, whether you did it on a laptop or, or whatever, and you just went to the store, how do you remember everything that, that went on? Because the detail in, in both books yeah. are immense. You know, we did this, we did that. My motorbike got, you know... Oh, yeah, well, got, you're not going to forget that, are eating, you? Eating on the beach and all of that. Yeah. yeah, but little incidental. Did you have to ring mates up, you know, Paul yeah, Simpson or people yeah. like that, and say, listen, when, when did this happen? Yeah, I've, I did quite a lot of research, and there's a lot of it's online as well, like, you know, dates. Yeah. All the dates that we've ever played are online, and some of them have even got the songs. So that puts you back into, you know, knowing exactly what was going on. Mm. And then I've got tapes as well. There's a tape of us at the YMCA, which is the... The gig where um, uh, uh, Seymour Stein came to see us and decided right. to sign us to Sire Records, you know. So we've, I've got a tape of that gig, so I know exactly what went on. I know what it sounded like. I know what songs we did. I know what Max said in between the songs. So, you know, and then like we watched Joy Division afterwards, and we all stood at the back on the sticky carpet mm. and watched Joy Division. Brian's Diner, Stanley Street. Yeah. Brian's Lean and Hungry was it yeah, called? Yeah. I used to work facing there. And you see in there now and again, but Brian McCaffrey he was a boxer, wasn't he? Yeah. Was that was that kind of? It seemed to be your office at the time. But Brian's diner, um, I think the tube came up and did a little thing with you, didn't they? They yeah, they well, filmed on the day. Part of the thing was you had to get a meal at Brian's diner and get your thing ticket stamped. Yeah, we didn't adhere it. to it, it totally. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But there was a big queue outside Brian's. They were up the wall. They didn't know what to expect. Yeah, you know. So they sold a few uh, egg and chips that day. I'm glad I caught it. It's been 40 years. I'm glad yeah. you didn't scare me this time. No, well, you know, early days. <laughs> We've all mellowed. <laughs> We've all mellowed. <laughs> Should we do it again in another 40? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, so the the paperback is out on, on the 11th. The 11th, yeah. Okay. That's what I've been told anyway. Yeah, So it is. Book early. Yeah, book early. Can't wait for the next one. I know you said before there's the, well, the, the, there's no pressure, but yeah, I want I'll, I want to know the full story now. You see, that's well, it. yeah, you know, it's um, it's been a brilliant adventure. You know, did you enjoy like, doing it? The writing, yeah, yeah, I loved it. Did you? I loved it. It's like going in a time machine, and you know, I was back in my dad's back parlor, and you knew exactly where every, where the plug sockets were, the horrible anaglypta on the wall, you know. The shitty windows. Can you say shitty? <laughs> Can now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, mm. yeah, it was just you know the horrible yeah curtains that were threadbare and nets, grey nets, three inches of flies on the. I suppose I could have cleaned yeah. it up myself, but you know, <laughs> that didn't was going to be the Hoover. <laughs> Next question. The well, Hoover's a bit complicated. I can't tune a guitar. I can't can't yeah, work right. the Hoover. I think it's a good time <laughs> to uh, wind this up now, don't you? <laughs> Well, listen, really good to see you. Thanks nice so one. much. Nice Cheers, Nelly. Thank you. Take care. Cheers. Cheers.